Welcome to Candid Conversation number 193. Today we're going to talk about women. I can see the blood pressure rising just because I mentioned that. Uh, but no, I received an email from someone at, who's uh, teaching Bible study on women, so uh, or with women in the in the audience. And so I thought it'd be good to talk about how women are different from men when it comes to how their mind works. Uh, Paul told Timothy, he told the men to be sober-minded. The young men to be sober-minded. That's the only commandment that the young men receive from Paul. The young women, though, received a whole list of commandments. To love their husbands, to take care of the household, to uh, be chaste, to um, just a long list, about six or seven things there. Whereas the men were just sober-minded. And that has to do with really women, when it comes to how they think, are already sober-minded. Or I should say they're already sober-minded. I should say that they are already stable-minded. Whether the thinking is correct or not depends on what they think. But they are very stable in how they view things. What I mean by that is that they learn whatever they learn, good or bad, and that's in their mind, and that's how they operate, and it's very difficult to get them to change. It's like, yeah, and I don't think men, or probably women don't understand this either, is because women are seen, at least by men, as being very emotional where they can cry over the least little thing and get all upset whereas men aren't like that and so you think that well they're not too stable then they're too emotional but really it shows their stability in their mind like that because a man you know you want to do something it's like the the, the woman wants to do something the man he just gives up in the argument he's like you know an argument between the husband and the wife wife wants to do something, the man wants to do something, the woman's going to get her way. That's just how it is. And, and the reason is because the man it will eventually give up. Whereas the woman is very stable-minded. She's thinking a certain way, this is how it needs to be, and there's no changing her on that. Whereas the men are just, even though they have an idea, it's like, I'm tired of arguing about this. If you want to do it this way, fine. And there's, for women to be stable-minded like that, there's good in that and there's also bad in that. So, for example, if you have a husband and wife and the husband is in trouble, like he's alcoholic or, uh, you know, he does things that he shouldn't do, the woman is very stable and he's not, she's not going to change. She is going to stay by his side. She is going to, and this is, I, I'm just, of course, all this is in general. I realize there are exceptions to this. But they say the, the husband, he finds, she finds out he's an alcoholic. And the woman will be there to help him out of that. If, you know, he, she'll be there when he's suffering withdrawals or she'll be there to pour out the booze that's hidden around the house uh, she'll be there to try to keep him from the bad influences the friends that would cause him to drink um, she's going to be that stable person there to help the man because of her stable mind that's why Paul doesn't have to instruct the women to be sober, the young women to be sober-minded. Well, he does, but then uh, a lot of it is actions. It's more or less, and that goes with roles as well. When God made man and woman, he made the man to be the head of the woman. And so the reason is because the woman can just... Once she receives instructions from the man, once the man tells her this is what needs to be done, this is what we're going to do, 
and she's got it set in her mind, she'll do it. Whereas the man is more likely to be given over to passions and not go by sober-minded thinking. And that's why, you know, I give the example of the, the alcoholic. There are more men in prison. There are more men dealing with addictions like drugs and alcohol than there are women. Because men are more likely, they know what's right, they know they shouldn't be drinking. They shouldn't, I mean, they can drink, but they shouldn't get drunk. And yet, they keep drinking anyway. And they get drunk. And they develop bad habits. And they let it take over their lives. Yeah, I realize it happens with women too. But less likely to happen with women. They're more likely to say, this is wrong, I'm stopping here. That's why you see men get into sports more. Men are competitive, more competitive in nature. Men will watch sports more and they'll get into it and it's like you can't get them away from that TV set. But if a woman's watching sports, chances are something else happens. The doorbell rings, the phone rings, the, she can cook dinner, she can uh, you know, do different things and just get up and stop watching. You can be right in the middle of the most suspenseful moment of the game and there's no way you can move that man away from that TV screen. Whereas the woman, no problem. She gets right up when they're just about the climax of the game. You've been waiting three hours for it. And she gets up because the she's got to get the roast out of the oven. You know, a man would never do it. A man will let the roast burn. He wouldn't care. The woman's going to do it. She's got in her mind, she's stable-minded there. She's not led by the emotions. And so well, you may say, well, what, what does all this have to do with church? Well, we're talking about beliefs, church, and the way it plays in is that because women are the more stable-minded, they are also made by God to be the ones that put the family together. They're the ones that give birth to the kids, and they make sure that everything is fine with the family. That's what they care about. That's where their stability is. Um, they'll defend their husband, they'll keep their husband out of, you know, drinking and different things like that. But at the same time, I remember in the Cosby show, that was a big deal. Cliff, Cliff Huxtable always wanted to eat some food that was bad for him. Eat a hoagie or drink some soda or drink, eat some dessert. And Claire was there to keep him from eating that because she cared about his health. Of course, Cliff didn't like it because he wanted to eat that thing and you couldn't. And so it was always this battle where he was trying to eat what he wanted to eat and Claire was concerned about his well-being and not letting him eat. And that's how women are. So, you know, when something happens to a child, the mother is right there to, you know, whenever a child is, is sick, even when you're an adult, you always want your mom there. Not really your father, because your father isn't going to be there to... I mean, it's not that your father doesn't care about you, but he's like, eh, the boy skinned his knee. It'll be fine. And, uh, oh, he's throwing up now. It'll pass. You know, the, the man, the, the mother is there. Oh, no, no, let me, let, me get the, let me get this. Let me do this. Oh, you okay, little Johnny? And, you know, it's... Uh, the woman is all about keeping the family together. That's her stable mind, keeping that family unit. And so that's where it comes in when it comes to beliefs. And that's why you'll see, for example, most people who go to church, most of the time the person who wants, uh, the family that wants people to go to church is the wife. It's not the husband. The reason the wife wants to go to church is because she's concerned about the family. And churches, for the most part, teach works-based salvation. Even if they say they believe in eternal security, their words promote works. Where you got to get right with God by obeying what God says in His Word. And you need to do what God says to do. Obey the Ten Commandments. And so the the mother is usually the one of the family who wants to get the whole family to church because then that way maybe her husband will stop drinking when he gets right with God and maybe the 
the kids, they'll grow up to be good moral people and they'll stay out of trouble all their lives because they'll be taught good morals from the church. And even if the woman is single, she's more likely to look for a husband at a church than at a bar because she says, well, I get a better quality man if he's a God-fearing man who goes to church as opposed to someone who gets drunk. And so for most churches you find that, I'm talking about mainstream fundamental Christianity and also Catholics or whoever, all the denominations, you go to any church, any denomination, and you'll see that there are more women there than there are men. But when you go to a Bible-believing church, they take the Bible as their authority and they don't care what man says and they don't care what a denomination says or what church history says. You'll find a lot more men than you will women because men don't have those stable mindset. They're not thinking about let's make sure the family sticks together. They're thinking and this is if, you know, if a man is sober-minded, if he's thinking correctly, then he's thinking, we need to get the truth of God's Word. We need to believe that truth. We need to follow it. And I'm going to this church because they teach the truth of God's Word. I know from churches that, that do that, that are Bible-believing churches. There are very few of them, and you'll see men there. You'll see men without their wives. It's interesting because women and for the most of society it's the women who keep nagging the men to try to get them to go to church they can force the kids to go to church but the husband's a little harder and they keep nagging come on come on bob let's go to church we gotta set a good example for our kids we gotta get right with god we gotta make sure we don't do all those bad things and so they're there nagging the man over and over to try to get him to go to church. But when it comes to people who believe their Bibles, we find that it's the men who go. And because the men are more, they're not stable-minded, then they are going to, they're going to say, well, I'm going after the truth and I don't care. So when it comes to, I don't care what you do. And so then the women, they are the ones who get men to stop going to Bible-believing churches. So in most of society, when the men are immoral, it's the women who are trying to get the men to go to church. But then when the men are sober-minded and they want the truth of God's word and to follow that, it's the women who nag the men not to go to the church. Oh, we can't go to that church. Or, uh, contrary, if there are men who there's no church, no Bible-believing church in the area, and the men say, I don't want to go to that church because it's all, you know, the church of the family that goes to. The men are going to be rebellious to stay at home. They'll read their Bibles. They'll listen to messages online. Uh, a lot of the people who watch my videos are men and not women because watching internet videos caters more to, for the truth, caters more to men. Because women aren't interested in sound doctrine as much. Again, I'm speaking in general here. The women are more interested in keeping the family together, having a good moral family, everybody staying out of trouble, everybody uh, looking good to others. They're concerned more about that appearance. And the men are more concerned, if, if they're sober-minded, are more concerned about finding the truth. So you'll have men who are concerned about the truth, and they won't go to the church, and then the women keep nagging them about going to the church with the family, and the women talk about how bad their husbands are because they won't attend church and they won't do this or that. And so the whole church thinks the men are bad. When the men are staying at home, watching YouTube videos, learning the truth of God's Word far more than they would going to that church that's not taking the Bible as their final authority. And the result is the men are growing, they're becoming sober-minded, and they're learning the things of God, and the women think they're rebellious and backslidden and away from God. It's because 
again, the women are more stable-minded, but if they're stable-minded in religion and false doctrine, it's a lot harder to get them out of it. So I know cases where men have gone to church, and that's why you'll find in Bible-believing churches, you'll find more men than women. It's because the women won't go. Because they see going to church, a Bible-believing church, as an act of rebellion. Because generally, families, they go to its churches as a family. It's all about religion. It's all about looking good and being good moral people. It's all about self-righteousness in general. And so if a woman grows up with that in her mind, then she is going to go to that church of her family and she will not be moved from that because she's stable-minded. She's stable in that. Whereas the men, because they rely more upon their, you know, they're more, they'll go deep into things and not care what other people think, they're more likely to go along, uh, go to the Bible-believing church or at least forsake the church that the women go to. Uh, they're, they're the ones that are going to be considered rebellious, but really in this case, if the men are being sober-minded, it's because they're rebellion because they're getting to the truth. So the women are great for the men who are not being sober-minded and are following addictions of the flesh, but the men are great because when they take a stand and are sober-minded, then they are seeking the things of the Spirit rather than the lust of the flesh. And that's why God made the men the spiritual leaders because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so all, all, um, all people have that background of being dead in their trespasses and sins. And at some point, even if it's at an early age, they believe the gospel, they're saved, well then, as Galatians 5.17 says, the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. There is an internal battle there between the flesh and the spirit. And because the women are more stable-minded, they are more likely to go with the flesh than the men are. The men will say, this is of God, I am following that and I'm going to be sober-minded thinking. And so then, when the men replace the flesh with the spirit, and when the women recognize their proper role of being subject, subject to the man to obey their husbands, not the other way around, not to rule over them, not to usurp authority, then the women see the sober-mindedness of the men, and then that is how they change their stable-mindedness and change from the flesh into the spiritual. They see the example of the believing man who has changed from going to the flesh to the spirit. But, so it, you know, it's a good thing that women are stable-minded to help in society. You wouldn't have, you'd have millions more uh, orphans if it wasn't for women having that need to keep the family together and raise the kids. Because men, I mean, they love their kids, but they're not interested in keeping the kids together as much. That's why you hear about deadbeat dads. You don't hear so much about deadbeat moms because the woman provides the stability. But when it comes to sin and the things of God, once you're saved, your stableness is in sin because the sin nature, because you're dead in trespasses and sins. And now you need to make a change. You are a new creature in Christ. And you need to allow Christ to live in you. And women are less likely to do that because they are more stable-minded. So they are more likely to continue doing what they were doing. Keep up appearances. Keep that flesh contest going. You look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that's what it was all about. They loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. They love to be seen in the marketplace. They love to be called rabbi. They love to have the best seats um, in, in, in an area there. It was all about the flesh, and that's what religion is. 2 Corinthians 10.5 talks about casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself 
against the knowledge of Christ. Religion is a high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Now, it helps in the function of society. I mean, you look at, if you look at, say, good Mormons, I mean, that would be a good society to live in in the fact that you wouldn't have to worry about theft, uh, you know, violence against you. You know, if they're good, upstanding Mormons, they are not going to kill you. They are not going to steal stuff from you. Uh, they are going to be good, hardworking, loving people. But in terms of where you go when you die, they're going to go to hell if they haven't trusted in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sins. And because they have that work-based salvation. So they need to get out of that thinking in terms of their eternity, even though their behavior is good for society. And so that's how women are, is that they are good for keeping the family together, keeping society functioning. If they didn't do what they did, uh, you think this world is bad now. I mean, it would really be bad if women just stop saying, I, I don't, I've had the same attitude with the kids as you do. I have the same attitude about your drunkenness as you do. I don't care. And they just let it go and stop nagging the people and trying to get them to do things. But when it comes to spirituality, though, it's the opposite. Because their stability now works against them. Because their stability is sin nature. Dead in trespasses and sins. They're saved. They become new creatures in Christ. The man, remember, he's the passionate guy, the one who easily gets drunk. Well, then he's, he's all out for drinking or he's all out for football. Well, once he's saved, he's all out for Christ. And he says, let me get that sound doctrine in me. And I realize a lot of men get caught up in religion as well. A lot of times the religion part, especially today, because you look at the religion, it's geared more toward women, the worship services, and it's the type of thing that they like because the flesh recognizes that the women will get the men there. If you, if you cater to the men, well, then they're going to rebel again. They'll either go along with the women to other churches because the women keep nagging them to go to church, or they'll just stay at home and not go to church and read their Bibles and get sound doctrine in them uh, on their own. That doesn't really help the pocketbooks of the people around the churches. Uh, even if they do go to church, they, they may just go by themselves. It's harder to get the wives to go along because they, the wives will see that going to that Bible-believing church as an act of rebellion because it's going against her sin nature. Well, it's going against the man's sin nature too, but the man is more likely to change, whereas the woman is more stable-minded. So what you see in Bible-believing churches is you see fewer women the women that you see there aren't concerned about the sound doctrine anymore. They may just be doing the opposite of the religious churches where the men go along because the women want them there. The women go to the Bible-believing churches. They may say, well, you know, I'm a Christian. Uh, I've been saved. And the Bible says that I should submit myself to my husband. And so my husband wants to go to this church, so I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to sacrifice by going there. But she doesn't get the sound doctrine. She doesn't care about the sound doctrine. As much. Again, I'm speaking in generalities. I recognize there, and I've met situations that are quite the opposite, uh, where the women are concerned with the sound doctrine and the men aren't. But in general, what you have, because the women are more stable-minded, they're more likely to go by their flesh. And so then they'll, if they do go to the Bible-believing church, they are more likely to not care about it. They're just going through the motions just like a man would go through the motions at a fundamental church. It's, my husband wants to go, so I'm going. You know, at least he's not sitting at home watching football. At least he's not drinking, so I'll support him in this. And so they're not really concerned about sound doctrine. They're not really learning. Um, they're not, you know, fighting for what's right because it's not in the flesh. It's a spiritual thing, and they're growing spiritually. So it's the men who ask the questions. It's the men who learn the things. And then um, it's up to the women then to say, okay, um, I've seen the growth in my husband. I've seen the change that Christ has made in his life. I've seen Christ living in him. Uh, therefore, I will now fall in line with the family because the women are more aligned with the family. So if they are willing to make the change then, then they follow the husband. So the women are more likely to get into sound doctrine 
and believe God and his word when they see Christ living in the man. Uh, the man, if the woman gets a sound doctrine and Christ is living in her, the woman is, I'm sorry, the man is not likely to follow that example. Uh, he's got to do it himself. You notice that if you're a married couple, you know that. If a woman suggests something, the man, you know, take out the trash. The man was probably going to take out the trash, but now that the woman suggested it, the man's not going to take out the trash because now it seems like she's a, a lording it over him and she's not supposed to be lord over him. So then he says, no, I'm not going to take out the trash. But if the woman would have just been silent and not said anything, he may have taken the trash out anyway because it was his idea. And women know they have to manipulate men to get them to think, to get them to do what they want them to do by making the man think that it was his idea in order to get him to do it. Because if the woman tries to order the man to do something, then the man won't do it because she's bossing him. So she's got to try to manipulate him to try to get him to make it, to get him to do it, what she wants to do, but in a more subtle way. So it's the same thing when it comes to the sound doctrine. The women are not going to go along with the man in learning the sound doctrine. Maybe they go along with the church because that's what the man wants to do and obeying him, but she's not interested in the sound doctrine. She won't get interested in it <coughs> and learn that sound doctrine until she sees Christ living in the man. And because she's family oriented, then she sees, oh wow, Christ really has made a change in my husband. He's got that sound doctrine in him. Christ is living in him. And now our family is better, not because we went to church and we've got good morals and we're doing what we're supposed to do, but because this sound doctrine is important and Christ is living in him. Therefore, I will now learn that and learn from my husband and ask him questions and grow in that. And so that's why God made the men to be the leaders, because when it comes to the function of society, women are best at that. They excel at that because of the stable mind. They'll go by their conscience. They won't do all these crimes and things that get the men in trouble. But when it comes to growing in Christ, women have to, and men, whoever it is, have to leave that stable mind conscience of right and wrong and say, I am a sinner and I need Christ to save me and I trust in his death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for my sins. And now I'm going to learn sound doctrine and allow that doctrine to be in my inner man and allow Christ to live in me. The men are much more likely to make that decision than women, which is why you see a lot more men in Bible-believing churches, but you see a lot more women in religious churches. And uh, in that case, then, when the men make that change, then they are great spiritual leaders, whereas the woman will not lead the man in that way. And so then the woman needs to submit to her husband and submit to that sound doctrine and get in line with this new way, the new creature in Christ. And then you've got the family living for Christ. Uh, that's how God designed it. Thanks for watching.